work out. Um, but we hope that everyone can hear us clearly. Uh, we're still glad to see that you guys are coming on. What's up, Shaylee? Good to see you coming on. And uh, I'm glad to be here, of course. I'm Pastor Jason Ridley, Youth Director of Allegheny West Conference. And I'm glad to be here with my lovely wife, Ms. Aislinn Ridley. And uh, we're just so glad to uh, worship with you uh, today. Um, we're going to go get started. We're going to get right um, in our word today. And I want to just invite you um, to bow your heads with me now. And it's just so exciting to see all the young people as you're coming on and families who are coming on at uh, this time. Father, we thank you for this uh, beautiful uh, Sabbath day, this resurrection weekend. And we're just thankful that we're able to just come and to worship uh, this morning. Be with us now as we um, have our worship time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we mentioned to you on last Sabbath as well um, that we have a new start time. And we are starting at 12, uh, 15 p.m. today. We are sorry that we got started a few minutes behind that time today. Um, but we, as we are recording live now at our conference office at the studio, there is a service that goes on before us. And um, uh, depending on what time that service ends could mean that there may be a time where we may be one or two minutes behind our scheduled time to start. Um, just because we are switching uh, sets over and things like that. But we thank you for your patience, and we are just glad to be here with you uh, live today on this beautiful resurrection uh, weekend. I want to just begin uh, by just, um, just sharing a story with you. It's a very familiar story, story that uh, all of us should know. It's actually one of the first stories that we find um, in the Bible. It goes all the way back to the beginning, and we know the story of Adam and Eve. And I want you to just imagine with me, just picture with me, um, what it was like during that time. Just whatever, just think of perfect, perfection. Um, they lived in a time where there were no such things as a coronavirus. There were no viruses. There were no sicknesses at all. And just imagine being there in, in, in the beginning when everything was perfect. Uh, the food was perfect. The water was perfect. You could walk around. They didn't just walk around by themselves. Adam and Eve actually walked with God. Think about that, young people, for a second. They were able to just, as me and my wife can go walk in the park, um, as you and your families can go walk around in the park, walk around in the neighborhood, they were able to just walk and talk and have communion with God. It was a time when... Uh, they, you know, we love to have dogs and f fish and hamsters and other small animals uh, as pets. But they were literally able to walk with elephants. They were able to walk with giraffes, ride giraffes. I've always had a desire of, man, what would it be like to slide down a giraffe's neck like a slide? That's just my imagination. But they were able to probably even do those things. Um, my favorite animals are lions. And I had the privilege several years ago, uh, back in, I, it was around 2010 or some time, uh, I was able to go on a lion walk in Zambia um, for my birthday. And I was able to walk with three lions. Uh, they were 11 month old lions. They were raised with humans. So they were familiar with humans. Uh, they were big, but they weren't, they weren't like a full grown male lion. It was two boys and a girl, but I was able to walk in the jungle with them. And it was such an amazing time. But still, that can't compare uh, to how Adam and Eve could, could just walk and talk with, with animals that we call wild animals today. They could lay out in the shade and, and lay uh, beside a lion and tigers and bears. And just, they were just able to do all of the things that, that we can only dream of doing now because things were perfect. Everything was in harmony. Uh, trees, the, they didn't die and the leaves fall off. Everything was just complete perfection. Until one day, as we know, uh, Eve being tricked by the serpent, ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then she shared with Adam and he ate. And we know that sin, that's how sin uh, entered into the world. It was the tree that God had for, forbidden, told them never to eat from that tree. He said, listen, Adam and Eve, 
you see all of the hundreds and thousands of trees that have been created all around here. You can eat from every one, but please don't eat from this one. But they ate from the tree. Hi, Isaac. Hi, Isaac. Uh, that's our nephew. <laughs> but they ate from that tree, and sin was brought into the world. And there are two things that I want to share with you now that happened as a result of, a, of Adam and Eve eating from the tree. The very first thing that happens, it's going to set the foundation for our just talk today. The first thing that happened is Adam and Eve, who walked and talked with God, now they try to hide from God. They went and hid from God. That's what Adam and Eve did. But secondly, which is so important, young people, that you understand this today, is that in that moment, God came looking for them. Now, oftentimes, our first response is our natural response. It's our realist response. It's, it's our most authentic response. And God's first response, when Adam and Eve sinned, when they messed up, when they were trying to hide from God, is that they came, is that God came looking for them. Adam and Eve's response was to, in essence, abandon the relationship. They tried to hide, run away from God. But God's response was to restore it. It was to save the relationship. He came looking for them. And it was this desire, it was God's desire to restore, to save the relationship because of his love. Don't miss that, young people. Because of his love for Adam and Eve is, is, is what ultimately led Jesus Christ to the cross of Calvary. As we celebrate this resurrection weekend, it's what led Jesus, to the, Jesus Christ to the cross. This is why the scripture says, John 3.16, uh, probably the most familiar scripture in all of the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What a beautiful scripture today. But I don't want to stop there because there is a verse that comes right after it, verse 17, which I believe is just as important. It says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What a beautiful verse. And when you look at that word condemn, the Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines condemn as pronounced guilty uh, and sentenced to punishment. But that's not what Christ came to do. Christ did not come to pronounce a guilty verdict on you. He did not come to uh, sentence us to a punishment, uh, but to the contrary, he came to pay the punishment for us. You see, if you don't remember anything else that I say today, understand this, young people. The message of the cross is that God would rather die than live without you. That's the beauty in the cross, that he would rather die than live without you. All because he loves you, all because he loves me, all because he loves Aislinn, and more than anything, like he came looking for Adam and Eve that day in the garden, is that he wants to save the relationship. Understanding all of this, the fact that Jesus has come, not, he was, not just come, but he was sent by his father, not to condemn the world. He has not come to condemn you. The question is, the question that we have to ask ourselves today, and it's a question that I think about from time to time, and I know Azen thinks about it as well as we've talked about it, is if that is the case, 
The question is, why do we continue then to do it to ourselves, condemn ourselves? Why do we continue to do it to others, condemn others? You know, this is not a new struggle. I believe this is the very thing that caused Adam and Eve to hide from God after they sinned and messed up. Uh, who, after they, formed, they used to just walk in the garden with God daily, but, but when they, they, they sinned and made that mistake, when they did what they should not have done, their instant response was, I want to hide. Let me run from God. Think about it. When we mess up, when we mess up is really when we need to be closest to God. When I need to be near it. When I mess up is when I really need to be nearest to God. But unfortunately, day, oftentimes, it's when we want to be the farthest away from it. It's when we try to be the farthest away from it. I've experienced it myself. I've experienced those times where I didn't feel like I could pray or I should pray because of things that I've done wrong, mistakes that I made, things that I know I should not have done. I've had moments in, in my life when I didn't even feel like, man, I, should, why am I, I shouldn't be preaching. I shouldn't be up here sharing a message today because of stuff that, that I've done in my life. So it's not just you. We've all experienced it. We've all dealt with it before. But young people, I need you to understand today that, that any thought, any feeling, any emotion, or even any person that tries to pull you away from God is not of God. It's not of God today. Because his only desire, God's only desire in all of this is to save. That's why he went to the cross for you. That's why he went to the cross for me. That's why he went to the cross for Aislinn. This does not mean, however, and it's important that we note, that there are no consequences for our sins or our bad decisions or mistakes. I mean, think about it. Look at Adam and Eve. Before they sinned, death did not exist in the world. But as a result of their sin, um, years later, they had to watch, they, 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 had to live through their son Cain killing their other son, his brother Abel. Uh, when women have, give birth to children nowadays, one of the responses of the sin, the act of sin, was that they would bear pain when they give birth. Um, in our own lives, we've experienced the results, the consequences of sins and mistakes and, and bad decisions that we've made in, in our lives. So there doesn't, it doesn't mean that, that there are no consequences to doing wrong. But the good news today is that, but even when we face consequences and have to deal with the results of, of, of sins and bad decisions and mistakes that we make, yet we don't have to be condemned. Yet God has not come to pronounce a final guilty verdict on our life. But he paid the ultimate price, the ultimate guilt. A sinless God paid the ultimate guilty price for you, for me today. And it's because of that sacrifice, we have hope that we can, when we come to Jesus, we can be forgiven our sins. And he can live inside of us and change our lives. And we can be saved in his kingdom when he returns again. Amen. So on this resurrection weekend, I want all of us, especially my young people who are, who are listening in, that let's commit today. See, Jesus' death on Calvary's cross was the ultimate commitment to you. It was the ultimate commitment to me that, he, that we're in this thing together for eternity. Because he would rather die than live without you. He wants that relationship to last forever. So let's commit today that we are no longer under condemnation. 
Jesus did not come into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So as we make that commitment today, there are two things that I need us to do. It is make the commitment through the power of Jesus today that we won't condemn our, that we will no longer condemn ourselves. You know, there are a lot of people who are afraid of church and, and committing to church and, and, and committing a life to God, especially young people, because they feel that they're unworthy to do so, that they can't do so, that how could God love them because of mistakes that they've made, because of sins. But God died specifically for you. And remember, as I said, any emotion, any thought, any feeling, or even any person that does or says anything to you to try to pull you away from God, that's not of God. And my wife's going to share a little with you later on scriptures in his word where God really tells you and said, shows in his word what he really thinks about you. And so we're going to make the commitment today that, that we're no longer going to give in to the guilt. We're no longer going to give in to shame, um, a feeling unwanted or unloved, because we know that God loves us unconditionally. And it was even at our worst that he gave his best for us, which was his life. So we're no longer going to condemn ourselves. And secondly, we're going to make the commitment today that not only will we not condemn ourselves, but from this day forward, we're no longer going to condemn others. It's sad and it's unfortunate today, but sometimes church can be difficult for people. Not because they feel God has done anything to them, but there are a lot of people who sometimes leave church because they are hurt by others. For an institution that exists solely because of the forgiveness of God. The only reason any of us can be saved is because God forgave us. But yet oftentimes, unfortunately in church, not everyone, but sometimes some of our people can be the most unforgiving people and the most condemning. Um, it's unfortunate, but sometimes you can do 99 things right but some people in church will only remember the one thing that you did wrong. It's unfortunate, but sometimes because of our own feelings of condemnation about ourselves, we easily want to project those same feelings on other people. Because you know those saying, misery loves company. And sometimes because we feel condemned, it's easier for us to want to condemn others. But as we're making the commitment today that we won't condemn ourselves, we won't, from this day forward, condemn anyone else either. Because Jesus did not come to condemn, but he came to save today. And if you, and even though I know I can't see you, but if you want to make that commitment today, I know I'm making that commitment. I just want you to raise your hand. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for the sacrifice of Jesus. And if you don't remember anything else, remember, the message of the cross is that Jesus, that God our Father, would rather die than live without you. He wants to see you in heaven, young people. He wants to see us all in heaven. He's paid the price. We just accept it today. Amen? Amen. Let's, uh, at this time, we want to just go and uh, spend some time in prayer. We want to do our season of prayer this time. And um, we want you guys to just begin to share with us your prayer request. You can write them in on the screen. My wife, if you could begin to just write down the different prayer requests that come in. Amen. Amen. Hi, mother-in-law. <laughs> she said Alan Peter is watching, too. Okay. Guys, share with us your prayer request. And we want to welcome all of our viewers as well on Facebook and on our Allegheny West Conference 
uh, website. Yes, if this is your first time, welcome. If this is not your first time, welcome back. We're so glad that you could worship with us today. Amen. Dalito has an unspoken request. Okay. Lynette and Avery. Hello. We're taking our prayer request now. If you're writing prayer requests on, uh, on Facebook, unfortunately, we are not able to, to see those at this time. But we will go back later during the, uh, as we watch the rebroadcast just to make sure we see your prayer request as well. We have unspoken, we have prayed for Grandma Scales. Hi, Grandma Scales. For Alvin, Chia. Okay. Pr uh, prayer for Elena as she prepares for college. Shout out to Elena, congratulations. Graduating from Pine Forge Academy this year. Pandra not feeling well. For his protection always. Eugenia and Emma Perry, we have Unspoken. We have Allegra Jenkins. Wow, I haven't heard that name in a while. Shout out to Allegra. Pray for our soul to be ready for God's soon return. Hallelujah. Strength and healing, Brown from Facebook. We have Strength and Healing. Thank you, Gershon. Strength and Healing from Facebook. Coronavirus, yes, we're going to rebuke the virus today. We need it to go away in Jesus' name. Any other prayer requests? We have time for a few more prayer requests. For Toko. Somebody put out a prayer request for Toko. Amen. Any others? Pray for my family and for spiritual growth. Amen. Oh, that's my friend Onika. Onika. Amen. Spiritual growth. Our church family in AWC. Amen. CAA and Precious Jewels. Amen. Essential personnel. Amen. Pray for my family, especially my grandma. Amen. Shout out to all the grandmas out there. Rama Junior Academy, amen, our academy in Cleveland. Pray for my family. And as you are watching live and you see these prayer requests, I encourage you to write them down as well and pray for your brothers and sisters on the line. Amen. So I'm going to uh, ask Azen if you can pray first, sure. and then I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just so thankful for this Sabbath day where we can come to you as a family, Lord, even though it's virtually. We're just so thankful for this opportunity to come together and pray with one another and lift up these requests before you. Lord, we're asking that you would just first cleanse us from unrighteousness and that you would um, just forgive us for our sins. And I pray that you would just touch the hearts of every person that's um, present uh, now and that will view this later on. God, I ask that you would just cover every request on this sheet of paper. You know the hearts and you know uh, your people. You know everything that they're going through right now. I pray that you would just encourage them today and help them to know that you're going to work everything out for them, Lord. I pray that you would just provide healing. I pray that you would just provide, those, provide for those who are in need during this time. I pray for all of the students, God, that are just uh, dealing with various challenges. I pray for every parent and for um, I pray for those who have also lost loved ones to this virus. I pray that you just comfort their hearts and be with those who are grieving during this time, Lord. We're trusting that you're going to um, just come through for us, Lord. So I pray that you would give us hearts um, full of faith and that we would just grow closer to you each day. These things we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Lord God, we just call out these prayer requests now. Um, as we continue to labor just in prayer just a little while longer, uh, we pray... There were several who had unspoken requests. We pray for Lynette and Avery. We pray for Grandma Scales. Uh, we pray for Alvin and Sia. We pray for Alina. Uh, uh, Alina. We pray for Elena, who is prepping for college. We pray for Pandra for protection. Uh, we pray for Allegra Jenkins. We pray for strength and for healing. We pray for Toko. 
We pray for family and spiritual growth. We pray for our AWC family. We pray for CAA. We pray for Rama uh, Academy. We pray for all of the essential personnel. We pray for all of the grandmothers. We pray for all of the family. And God, we pray, especially now for this coronavirus, and we rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and we're praying for healing. We know that thou art the great physician. We know that you are the bomb in Gilead, and we pray for healing now. And we just pray, God, that for each request that has been called out today, each request that has been written in, God, each request that even in our human uh, flesh, Lord God, and uh, in our desire to pray over every request, but if there have been some that have been listed that we have missed, we're thankful that you have not missed any request, and we pray, God, that you would cover that request now. In all of these prayer requests, as we hold hands, God, more importantly, our hand is in your hand, and we're thankful that you've got the whole world in your hand, and we're praying, God, that you would move upon each of these requests now. We're praying that you would, God, begin to be that difference maker that we all need, from the youngest to the oldest who is watching and a part of this service today. We thank you, God, that even on this resurrection uh, weekend, that, that you didn't stay dead, but you rose with all power in your hand and the keys of death and hell and the grave in your hands. And we're praying, God, right now that you would begin to speak healing and life over everyone who is a part of this service. God, not just those who are watching, but our families as well. And we pray, God, for healing for all those who are in the hospital with this coronavirus. We pray, God, that the, that the spread of it will stop, that the deaths would stop. And, uh, God, that those who are getting sick would all recover and that you would cover our families, that none of our families would get sick, and particularly our, the elderly members of our families and in our churches. And we, God, just pray for the salvation of the world now. And we're thankful, God, for the reminder of the promise today, God, that, that, that the promise of the cross, that you would rather die than live without us. And we're thankful that in spite of all of our sins and shortcomings, that we can be forgiven today, uh, that your blood can wash our sins away. And we thank you for salvation. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 That's power in prayer. Amen. Well, I'm so excited at this time. <laughs> So, Hazelyn, yes. what do you have for us to share with us now? Today I have something to share with all of you, but I just want to do a brief recap of last week. If you missed out last week, I'm so sorry that you missed last Sabbath because we had a wonderful time creating art together. And this week we didn't get to make art together, but I made an artwork to share with you as an example of something that you can do this week and also just to kind of encourage you and just kind of bring everything full circle with the message that Jason just shared about, you know, God's love for us and also to just to kind of reflect um, how God views us and just kind of to think about how he affirms us in scripture. So I have this. Drum roll. <laughs> Boom. Okay, so I'm going to come a little bit closer because it's harder to see from farther away. Do you need me to hold it? Um, just making sure this doesn't fall. Okay, so at the top it has the scripture, and I'm going to go ahead and read what's on here if because I know that you probably can't read every word that's on this canvas right now. So I'm going to turn it around and read it now, okay? So, it's called the greatest list. Okay, this, what's in the center is called the greatest list. So you see the world in the background, and on top of that, there are words. Um, Shout out to Africa, the motherland. <laughs> there are words on top of the world that I'm going to read to you now. Just so you all know, this was his idea. He was just, you know, reading this, uh, I guess, text on um, yeah, something I read a long time ago. right and he shared it with me and he was just like why don't you make an artwork and I was just like okay I'll try so this is what I came up with and I'm going to read the words to you now okay it says let me see if I can do this okay for God the greatest lover so loved the greatest degree the world the greatest company that he gave the greatest act, his gift. That he gave the greatest gift. Well, that he gave the greatest act. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. That he gave the greatest act, his only begotten son, the greatest gift that whosoever 
the greatest opportunity believes the greatest simplicity should not perish the greatest promise but the greatest difference have the greatest certainty everlasting life the greatest possession so that is what is written on the entire world and that's a reflection of the scripture John 3:16 it's broken down into those um, the greatest list and then on the outside of it I have written some affirmations and so I'm going to read those for you now as well okay so the first one is taken from 1st Peter chapter 2 verse 9 and it says I am a daughter of the king and also remember that these scriptures are ap applicable to anyone okay so it says I am a daughter of the king 1st Peter 2 verse 9 I am remarkably made, Psalms 139, verse 14. I am worth more than rubies, Proverbs 31, 10. I am a friend of Jesus, John 15, verse 15. I am chosen, holy, and blameless before God, Ephesians 1, verse 4. I have a future filled with hope, Jeremiah 29, 11. I have been accepted by Christ, Romans 15, verse 7. I am always on God's mind, Psalms 139, verse 13. I am strong and courageous, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. God is intentional with my life. All things are working for my good, Romans 8, 28. And so <laughs> this is the artwork that I had to share with you all today. I just encourage you to also in your own personal devotional time, you can, um, you know, just search the Bible for affirmations and really try to find out how God views you because in our conversation this week we were just kind of talking about how a lot of times the reason why we condemn ourselves is because we don't have the correct view of who God is so once we understand who he is then we'll be able to understand how he views us and once we're able to view ourselves the way God views us we won't condemn ourselves or other people so it's just um, an encouragement for you to really um, study and know for yourself all of the things that God says about you and just really to own that and feel special about it because like Jason said um, you know God loves you so much and he wants you to be with him he wants to you know to be known by you and the whole point of him coming to die is so that he wouldn't have to live without us so thank you for um, listening and if you decide to do this directive, please take a picture and send it to us and we'll repost it on our page. <laughs> thank, thank you, Tamaria. And so, Aizen, I need you just to do me one big favor. Mm -hmm. And if you could just go through this list again. Mm -hmm. And that time, um, this time, if you could just read it a little slower. A little slower, okay. Just in case there's someone on the line, I mean someone who's watching, who wants to write down these verses um, so that you can look up these verses for yourself. So you This is, again, as she mentioned, these scripture, scriptures are just the beginning um, in terms of looking in the Bible, um, of really sh showing to us and saying to us how God views us, what God thinks about us, mm -hmm. why God, when Adam and Eve messed up and tried to run and hide from God, why he came looking for them. And while he's, why he's still looking for us today and what ultimately led him to the cross to die uh, for our sins because he did not want to lose the relationship. Mm -hmm. He would rather die than live without you. So, Aiden, can you share those with us again? Yes. Yeah, so, this and the scriptures around? Uh, uh, just the scriptures, really. Okay. So, the first scripture, I'm going to read the scripture and then the phrase. Hope you have your pens ready. Okay. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. And that says, I am a daughter of the king. The second scripture is taken from Psalms 139, verse 14. I am remarkably made. The next scripture is taken from Proverbs 31, verse 10. I am worth more than rubies. Uh, the next scripture says, is actually taken from John chapter 15, verse 15. I am a friend of Jesus. The second scripture is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. I am chosen, holy, and blameless before God. 
The next scripture is uh, taken from Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I have a future filled with hope. The next scripture is taken from Romans chapter 15, verse 7. I have been accepted by Christ. Uh, the next one is uh, Psalm 139, verse 13. I am always on God's mind. The next one is Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. I am strong and courageous. And the final one here says, it's taken from Romans chapter 8, verse 28. God is intentional with my life. All things are working for my good. Amen. 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 Someone asked, why can't we see God's face? You know, one day we will see God's face. Uh, when, when he returns again, we'll have the opportunity to see him face to face and live with him for eternity. That's good news today. Amen? Amen. And we're thankful for just all of those uh, scriptures letting us know how God views and thinks about us. And just very quickly, um, just while we're, while we're still together, why don't you guys begin to just share with us some of your favorite scriptures that you can think of off the top of your head of, that speak to you about how God of how God views you, how, about how God views us. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Pastor Steve, what does Deuteronomy 31, 6 say? <laughs> Deuteronomy 31, 6. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Thirty-one six says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Isn't that good news to know? Amen. That he will not leave us nor forsake us. First Peter 3. We also see, uh, I love you with an everlasting love. Yes, God loves us with an everlasting love. First Peter 3, 3 to 9. Amen. Let me find that right quick. First Peter chapter three, verse three to nine. I'm going to read it very quickly. Well, I'm going to read. Do not let your normal be merely outward, arranging your hair, wearing gold, that's, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be hidden person of the heart, with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious, in the sight of God. Amen. Oh, um, the next one was, I think, Proverbs 30, verse 5. Proverbs 30, verse 5. But I see Toko posted my favorite one, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. All things are made new. I take that scripture very seriously, and thank you for sharing that, Toko. Amen. They're coming in so fast. I may miss some. I got Proverbs 30, verse 5. Every word of God is pure. Amen. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Amen. So for those of us who put our trust in him, he's a shield. God is protection. Amen. Psalms 91. Did you read it? Thou shalt not be afraid. He will cover thee with his wings. He will give his angels charge over thee. He will set thee on high. He will satisfy thee with long life. Amen. 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 I see Psalms 121, 1 and 2. And these are all promises. Mm -hmm. Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And these are the scriptures and promises that we need to, to in our down moments and times where we're feeling discouraged or feeling as condemned, where we want to condemn ourselves or feeling guilty and ready to give up, feeling as if God doesn't love us or God is through with us. These are the scriptures that we need to, re, to call to, rem, to, to mind, remembering how God really views us, how God truly views us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank I love the scriptures. That, I'm going to read maybe one or two more. Jasmine, uh, Romans 12, 6 through 13. <clears throat> Having them gifts, Romans 12, 6, uh, what is it? 6 to 13. 6 to 13. Having them gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. In prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion of our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches and teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. 
Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, giving to hospitality. We thank the Lord that he's given us all gifts. Amen? Amen. Every one of you has a gift. It may not be my gift. It may not be her gift. It may not be my gift um, it, as preaching or, or just pastoring those things. It may not be her gift of art and and ministering and singing, all those things, but every one of us has a gift. You have a gift, young people. Hi, Angel, you have a gift. Yes. Uh, Pat, casting all your cares upon him, upon Jesus, for he cares for you. Uh, he's not giving us a spirit of fear, that's one of my favorite, but power and love and a sound mind. Amen, amen, amen. We thank you guys for your verses. Um, and, and as uh, Azen said, please, this week, take some time. Um, and really just write out, look up scriptures and, and really begin to write out the verses mm -hmm. that really speak to you, <coughs> just reminding you of how God views you, yeah. what God thinks of us, mm -hmm. how much he loves us. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the last thing I'll say is if you're thinking about um, doing a painting, don't feel that you need to um, do exactly what I've done here. You can make it your own. You can paint anything you'd like, okay? And you can use any scripture you'd like, and we'd love to see your work, so please do share. Yes, and if you did the artwork from last week, during our service, our art service last week, many of you uh, sent it in to us. Uh, you can just DM us on this uh, page, mm -hmm. YM underscore AWC. If you finished it later on or later on today and forgot to send it to us and you still have it, we still would love for you to send the artwork to us. We would love to see it, and we would love to share it, as we've done with all the others, showing the rest of the world uh, what you have done. You want to just remind them what the assignment was that we um, did last week? Oh, sure. Oh, my friend. Hi, Adasha. Adasha, I'm looking forward to see your artwork, okay? So last week we did collages. And um, a collage is basically uh, artwork that uses images and words, letters to reflect an image or thought. So we focused on what makes us feel afraid last week. And we thought about all the different feelings that come with, you know, the coronavirus and, you know, just anxiety and all those different kind of things. We cut out images and words that reflected our personal thoughts and feelings about that. And then we shared it. So, and you should have seen Jason's artwork last week. It was great. <laughs> And we're so thankful for everyone that participated. Even if you didn't send in your artwork, we're thankful that you took the time to do that um, directive with us. Amen. Amen. Guys, if we're getting ready to close our time together this week, remember each other's prayer requests. All the prayer requests that, were, that we prayed over that were written in today. You guys, please write those prayer requests down and remember to pray for each other. Um, remember our new start time. Um, as we'll be recording here live at, our, at the studio at the conference office is 12.15 p.m. Um, if by chance we start a couple minutes behind that time, uh, just bear with us. It's because we are making the transition because there is another service that's being streamed live right before our service um, begins at 12.15. That's why we pushed it back an additional 15 minutes. But if we need another minute or two as we transition the set, uh, don't worry, we are coming on. We will be live. And just uh, we thank you for your patience and continue to, to uh, bear with us. Also, we want to just let you guys know, um, of course, we'll be back here again next Sabbath. But in two weeks, on April the 25th, we're just excited. Um, we know that many of our young people um, are already baptized members of the church. Hallelujah. Amen. And so what we are planning on doing, we know that we have not been able to go to our physical church buildings uh, lately. Um, and we don't know when we're going to be able to go back again. Uh, but in two weeks, so what we're going to do on April the 25th is we're going to have live during this service, we're going to have a family communion service. And we hope that all of you will participate with us. That's on April the 25th. It's going to be our family communion service. All our young people, all our teens who are, are baptized. Um, it'd be a great time, even if you have younger children in your home who have not been baptized, but it'd be a great opportunity then to use that time to, to 
tell them and share with them what baptism, I mean, what uh, communion is and why, why we do communion. And as we do it live together, we're going to have a family communion with you guys, and we're hoping that you'll join us. And we just want to let you know, even now, that's in two weeks, April the 25th, but of course you're going to need uh, some grape juice. You're going to need the bread uh, that you'll need for communion um, that day, as well as you'll need a couple towels, depending on how many um, people that you have that are in your home that are participating. Um, you'll need bowls or basins, because um, we're going to do the foot washing as well. Am I right? Yes. We're going to do the foot washing as well. Uh, we, we may not show you our feet. <laughs> you know, it's, it, the struggle is real out here. You know, I know some of y'all struggling too. Ain't been able to go get those pedicures, manicures, but uh, we're going to press on anyhow. Amen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll need, we'll need bowls. You'll need bowls and basins and, of course, water. And that's going to be on April 25th. And we're just going to have a wonderful family uh, communion time together. Yes, and preferably uh, warm water. Yes, Just preferably. Warm. Well, we prefer warm water. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, preferably warm uh, water is best. And we're just um, looking forward to that. And we have some other exciting things that will be coming up as well that we'll be announcing to you soon. Um, but next on April 25th will be our family uh, communion time. Any last word? Um, we love you guys. Yes. Thank you so much for yes. all of your prayers and your support. Yes, we love you guys. And uh, Aislinn, can you uh, close us out in prayer? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Definitely, Father, we're just so thankful for what you've done here today. We're just so thankful for your presence and your love towards us. We're thankful for the reminder that um, you just want to save us, Lord, and you... Um, are always waiting um, for us to come to you. So we just thank you for um, who you are and we just thank you for this time. I pray for everyone uh, that was present today, God, and I pray that you would just um, continue to pour your Holy Spirit um, into our hearts. And I pray that um, each day we'll make sure that we spend that quality time with you so that we can continue to get to know you, Lord. Uh, we thank you and we love you and we look forward to um, our time together again next week by God's grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 With your families today, <clears throat> listen, don't just enjoy the rest of this Sabbath day, but enjoy the rest of this Easter weekend. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's resurrection day, the day that Jesus rose from the grave to make all of this possible. And really enjoy this time with your family and know that our Redeemer draws nigh. He's going to come back soon. And our hope is to all be ready in prayers that we'll all be ready. And if you don't remember anything else, remember what we said. The whole message of, the, of, of Calvary, the cross, is that God would rather die than live without you, live without me, live without all of us. That goes for everyone who can hear me now. He, would, he, he chose to die rather than wanting to live without you. Heaven can be your home today, can be yours if you just choose Jesus. Amen. God bless.